Hey, I'm Daniel DK, and today I sat down for what was supposed to be a 25-minute interview with Corpse Grinder about Cannibal Corpse's 15th album, Violence Unimagined. What really happened was a four-hour hang where we talk about everything from tour life, how he really feels about the Marvel Universe, the weapons of WoW, and how getting the opportunity to punish his heroes inspires him to pay it forward by being the most fan-friendly band in metal. George, man, how you doing today? Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Let's jump right into it and talk about uh, the now album number 15. Is there is there still a desire to top a past performance or what's your mindset going in for number 15? Let's make the best record we can do. You know? I mean, you know, I want to be better, do better, sound more brutal. Brutality is the name of the game, uh, but I want people to sort of be able to hear what I'm saying, I guess, you know, at least, at least the death metal fans, you know. <laughs> let's talk about let's talk about Rutan for a minute. Having him join the band was that like a natural progression? And then on the writing side of it, like what kind of new flavors and spices did he bring? Obviously, it was just a natural choice. You know, once the decision was made, and you know, obviously we needed someone to step in. Replacing Pat would have been a big deal. I mean, Pat O'Brien's no slouch on guitar at all. You know, and so come on, I mean, he's like a sixth member of the band. You know, we've done so many records with him. We've known him so long. And as far as the writing goes, you know. Yeah, he writes some crazy, frantic stuff. I really think people are going to dig the songs he did. I don't think it, we have skipped a beat at all. He brings a definite energy. And he definitely is even crazier now. Like, like his energy is even more so because he doesn't have to sing. He doesn't have to worry about doing that, being by the mic. He could just just scream at the... Because, I mean, I look over, I'm singing. I see him. I look over at him and I'm like... And we just started going crazy. He brings this energy positivity. You bring up a very interesting point about uh, positivity. Mm. And I think that uh, people who haven't uh, been in band situations don't really realize how important something like positivity is in a band setting. They think it's all about, oh, we need a new guitar player. Let's find the best shredder, the best riffer. Let's find a guy. But if you got the best riffer and he's got a shit attitude, it is the last person you want to be in a room with. You know, we've all, look, we have all been in arguments with each other. And almost every time they're just for dumb shit. You know, just tensions on tour, you, you can't you escape, you know, and you're just kind of stuck in the room with everybody. Sometimes people get, tensions just boil over just from natural things, you know. It's, it, it, look, shit happens, man. That's why it was easy to pick him because I have pretty much lived with him. I've done multiple tours with him. We know him, you know, through every situation there is. Good times, bad times, strings not staying, you know, the guitar's not staying in tune. My vocals aren't working. And he's always just positive about it and gets through it. So we already knew what we were getting when we got him in a band. And it goes without saying his talent as far as, as you know, guitar player and whatnot. We are so fortunate in so many of the things that have went right our way that we had routine and we asked him to be in a band and that he accepted. I mean, because I know as well as you do, he's got hate eternal. He's got his studio. He's busy as shit, man. You know, it's a perfect marriage. I think, you know, we, we have the band that I think we're going to have until the time it is that we see we're done. That's, I love I it. Hope, you know, that way. That's awesome. And I mean, looking back at your 30 year career, what, what are some of the standout moments or defining things that you'll never forget? I can remember the, the my first band was called Corpse Grinder. And that was a death song, which was from a movie called The Corpse Grinders. I used to have a shirt of the movie, The Corpse Grinders. Like, you know, we would go to shows and we would see the same people. And so we saw these one guys all the time. And then eventually we just happened to talk to them at the show. And they were talking about they were going to do a band. And it was me and this friend of mine, Jeff. And he was like, oh, I got a guitar. And he knows the lyrics to everything. And they're like, we know. We see you headbanging and singing all the lyrics to every one of the shows here. And we left that Townsend party and we'd agreed to get together and jam. So basically we're going to be a band. I'm telling you right now, I got goosebumps. I, I think I was, I was like freaking out. And I think I was just like, dude, do you realize what just happened? I mean, seriously, the next day I called up my girlfriend and I told my mother, like, I'm going to be in a band. we got to do this band. We're going to go. And I was just like, it was the greatest fucking thing in the world, man. And that is one experience that is obviously before I was, I was the fucking dickhead going to shows. You know what I mean? I was wanting to be like those guys on stage. That was what I, that was my dream, you know, but you know, that, you know, meeting a bunch of the people I've had gotten to meet, touring with some of the bands we tour with, Creator, I mean, fuck, dude. Kind of, of course, wouldn't exist without Creator, you know? Yeah. Like, I know all these guys in all these bands. We shared a bus with Trypticon. I say, oh. Tom G. Warner invited me to come on stage and sing the throne fucking Emperor with them. And I did it. It's That's in London, insane. in London, England. I did all this shit. 
I mean, are you are you kidding me? You know what I mean? I met King Diamond. I'm eating dinner, go and take a bite. And there's King Diamond. Hey, are you the corpse grinder? Are you guys cannibal corpse? And I'm like, yeah. To me, King meeting King Diamond is probably the greatest moment in my metal life, as far as obviously getting in, you know, starting in bands, getting in cannibal corpse. Those are the top. It's unfucking real. It, I always have to kick myself in the ass to remind myself of it. Because trust me, there's times where I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm a star. It's been, it's been from coming to work. And I really don't mean that. It's just being a smart ass. I am so grateful to the fans, to everybody. Steve Souza, though, taught me one thing. MOD played with Exodus. And they played this place called The Network in Pasadena, Maryland. This is the first heavy show they ever had. And they had big signs, no slamming. You will be kicked out. Sure enough, my friend pushes me in a pit. Show a call, would I get thrown out? Now, of course, this in this day and age, try to go and try to show a call me, dude. First off, you ain't getting your arm around my neck, bro. But they threw me out, and um, there was a bunch of kids out. And I had to wait because my friends were still in there. I was just like, bummed. I'm like, fuck. So I'm just sitting there. And but Steve Souza comes out. You know, Zentro comes out. And he's like, hey, guys, how's it going, man? And I was like, oh, holy shit, you know. I just thought I would come out and just tell you that it's not our fault and, you know, sorry that you got kicked out and just, you know, just see how you guys are doing or whatever, which he, of course, didn't have to fucking do. Yeah, you know? super cool. You know, and that taught me something right there, man. It's just like, you know, I was just a kid. To me, I'm looking up at one of my idols, you know, or I'm looking just right at my idol, Steve, right next to me. Talked to us for probably half an hour or so, asked him to answer our stupid questions about things we didn't know shit about. And was great. And like I said, Steve Susan, who did not have to come out of the bus, came out of the bus and just super cool, just a regular person. And it always taught me if I ever get into doing this, you know, and I'm sure I've lost my path along the way sometimes. Just don't, just don't get too big of a head. Just remember where you came from. Remember who you were as opposed to who you are now, because who you are now is still just a person. Don't squander your opportunities to meet people and be cool with them. Don't don't treat people like shit. Treat them how you want to be treated and know that you were a fan once too. I think it's incredible for me to hear you talk and reflect and be so genuine about where you came from and the fans, especially this far into your career with all the successes and all the amazing things you've done. It really like, I love hearing you talk about it now in an appreciative way. And the fact you still punish your heroes because at the, at the core, you're still a fan. Like, I love yeah. that shit. It comes really full circle for me because when I was 16 years old and I started going to my first all ages metal shows, you know, drinking beers in the alley and going to the all, all ages metal show, trying to hold my shit together, being drunk for the first time, they were cannibal shows. They were those early cannibal shows that were all ages shows for me. And I used to stand outside your bus and you and Alex were always fucking nice to us. So I, it's full circle for me, man. I love it. People are going to put you on the pedestal, you know, and it's just up to you to know that you're on that pedestal because they put you there. And then you can, they can easily kick the motherfucker out from you.